Stage eight, a circuit race in Napoli. Short, the shortest road race of the Giro so far. Just 153 kilometers. But from the get-go, Mathieu van der Poel was determined to prize a powerful breakaway group clear. In the end, he was joined by over 20 riders, including three riders from Lotto Sudal and Biniam Grumai. It was Grumai who took the maximum points at the first of the intermediate sprints with 115 kilometers remaining. And then Mathieu van der Poel, with 46K still to go on this hilly circuit, ripped the race apart. From that moment on, it became very, very hard to control as Mauro Schmidt in the colors of Quickstep Alpha Vinyl watched an attack go up the road from Davide Gaboro. That was the opportunity that Thomas de Ghent and Han van Hooker, as well as Jorge Arcas from Movistar, took to go clear. With 37.3 kilometers to go, they were being chased by a group containing Biliam Grimai and Mauro Schmidt and Mathieu van der Poel. It was in the balance, with the gap around about 30 seconds inside the final 30 kilometers, as Mauro Schmidt launched one final huge acceleration, which ate into the advantage of the four riders at the front of the race. Mathieu van der Poel and Biniam Grimai joining in and trying to keep the momentum going as they closed to within around about 20 kilometers. But on the final uncategorized climb of the day, Thomas de Ghent hit the front and meanwhile back in the peloton, three and a half minutes further back down the road. Then the Kemner attacked to try and take the race lead from Juan Pedro Lopez. In the final two kilometers then, Thomas de Ghent had a slight advantage over Mathieu van der Poel and Biniam Grimai. With Han van Hooker leading him out, Thomas de Ghent, confident in his own abilities to judge the sprint to perfection, rode clear, and though he was chased by Gaboro and by Jorge Arcas, it was never really in doubt, and Thomas de Ghent, 10 years after his first victory at the Giro, won again. Thomas, tell us how did you manage to uh, get rid of Mathieu van der Poel and Binyam Girmay and how did you manage to fend them off? Yeah, with a group this big and uh, really good guys like uh, van der Poel and uh, Ulisi Girmay, we also knew that they will all, will all look at them. Um, Mathieu attacked on the steep part, uh, I think uh, second last lap, and he went uh, really hard to be got dropped, all three teammates. We made it back and uh, we, we made an attack just to, to, to try. We knew that everybody will look at uh, Van der Poel and, uh, and Girmay to close the gap. So uh, we took a bit of, a, of an advantage. And uh, we hoped that we could make it over this steep climb and that they will catch us after that. But they stayed at 30, uh, 30 seconds. So uh, I was working for Harm that he could attack on the climb. But he said he didn't have uh, good legs anymore. So uh, yeah, we, uh, I said the last three kilometers to Harm, you ride full. And uh, I'm sure I will, I, I will win the sprint, I, I'm, I'm sure, so just right fully did it perfectly until 300 meters to go, so I have to thank uh, Harm a lot uh, that, that he uh, could pull this also off uh, for me, but we, we did a good job as a team today. This comes 10 years after your first win at the Giro, from top of the Stelvio to the seaside in Napoli. Yeah, today uh, was uh, those, one of those days that uh, that suits me. Uh, it uh, looks a b little bit like uh, the, the Barcelona stage in uh, Volta Catalunya, always up down. It's hard to recover. It's also hard to close the gap. Um, but yeah, ten, 10 years after the Stelvio stage, I finally win uh, stage in the Giro again. And uh, if you would ask asked me two weeks ago if I was able to win a stage in the Giro, I would, would have said no because I was in so bad shape. And now the good legs are coming. Proficiat. Thank you. Bashiri, I know you've done three, two interviews already, so I'm going to ask you again, how are you feeling? Just amazing. I mean, when we talk about a plan in the morning, it, you know, very seldom do you get it right and we knew what we needed to do to have an opportunity to take the stage and uh, all credit to the boys today. Can I see your fingernails? Do you have any left? 
absolutely not. No, just, uh, yeah. Yeah, but it must have been, I mean, it was quite nerve wracking at the end there because I think there was only, what, eight or nine seconds in it with yeah, the chasing. Yeah, I know, group. When, when you have Van der Poel and the likes of Guillaume chasing, I don't know how close they I couldn't even look, you know, the gap was just coming down, but the boys committed. Thomas was confident, he was giving a lot of guidance to harm, he knew exactly what uh, we needed to do, and it was just full gas, and all Thomas had to do was uh, take a very, very, very special victory for him and the team. And that's a real trademark of Thomas's, isn't it? It is, I spoke it to is, him at yeah. the start of the race, yeah. and he had a little glint in his eye, I did wonder if he uh, might be going yeah, for it today. That's Thomas, eh? Yeah. Um, what does it mean for the team then, because uh, you haven't had the luck so far in this race? Well, you know, that's exactly it, you know, we keep trying, we don't give up. Um, we're a team that constantly fight and look for opportunities and that's what we've done today. A fifth Grand Tour career stage win for Thomas de Gens, a second at the Giro, ahead of Davide Gabora and Jorge Arcas in third place. Vinian Grumay in fifth with Van der Poel in seventh. And this man continues in the pink jersey for a fourth day. An unchanged lead of 38 seconds over Leonard Kemmer in second place with a blockhouse stage to come tomorrow where everything might change. Martin up to fourth.